101 uh, names, courses, and registrations. This is the third, uh, the third program on that, and we're going to talk about registrations and payments. So again, that's the goal today. Uh, we'll get you through the basics of the screens, talk about fees, payments, transfers, cancellations, advanced features, and helpful tips. <clears throat> and again, this is in the new version 8, which will be released officially June 15th. Uh, the demo, incidentally, is up on the web as we speak. So if you would like to uh, download the new Student Manager 8 demo, it's on the web. So uh, basics, the, the first thing we always, on most all data screens, we want to tell you that what you see on your data screen is a function of your preferences. And again, depending on your role in the organization that uses Student Manager, you may or may not be able to set those yourself. But on the system preferences, there is a whole set of options as to what you turn on, how you enable things. Uh, actually, some of the elements in here, like the pay options, what payment types you use, uh, is set up in the payments option screen. Some of the things you can do in a class to register a student in a class depends obviously upon how you have the course set up. So again, it is a, a team effort uh, between preferences, the course, and the student to get to a registration. So um, all roads lead to registrations. In Student Manager 8 and in 7, there are multiple ways to get a registration. Probably the normal, most common is to look up a student, hit the Add Registration button on the name screen. However, you can also look up a course and hit Add Registrations from the course screen. And then finally, you can look up a registration. And that is, if you have an existing registration you want to look up, there is a quick button on the registration screen. And I'm going to roll to Student Manager, and I'm going to launch the demo. So we're logging into Student Manager. We'll get through here. I wanted to get to the look here. Uh, cancel, no. OK. Look up name. The most common is you look up the student, you find the student, and you hit Add Registration. OK, that's the normal. And obviously, if this is a new student, you'd hit Add, Create the Record, hit Add Registration. All right. Second approach is to look up a class. <clears throat> so you can look up a class, uh, ACE 101B. You can look up a class, go over to Add Edit Regis, and then it will take you to any existing registration, but hitting the Add button will then add a new name into this class. So you can do it uh, from that way. Now, the other way is that if you have a need to edit an existing registration, the Lookup Registration option allows you to look up a name. Uh, who was that? Dole, Bob Dole. And what it does is immediately puts you into edit mode on the last registration that was entered for the student that you pick. Now, the advantage of this approach, and this isn't adding, but like in editing and maintaining registrations, if you are working with edits and transfers and grades and adjustments and pay on existing registrations, staying in that edit registration side, once we deal with the one person and close it, we go right back to the next lookup. OK, Smith. I want to go to Mr. Smith. OK, I'm done with Smith. I want to go to Mr. Jones. So that you can navigate quickly between the most current registration for the different people that you're navigating through. OK, so three different ways to look up a registration or to deal with registrations. And there's actually another. There is a mass import option or a speed registration entry option. And that's TBCL to be covered later in the, in the webinar. So stay with us. Unlike the names, much of the information in the registration fills in automatically. So uh, however, things like tracking code, um, that is, again, uh, really critical. We talk about this in marketing. We talk about this in the basic best practices 
is always try to capture the tracking code on a registration. Um, so again, I think it's probably the single most valuable marketing code out there. And again, there is a report to monitor the results. And I'm going to actually roll to manager to show you that because under reports, statistics, tracking code, uh, that will give you the report that will report on the tracking code and tell you what promotions brought in your students into your classes. All right. Uh, status field. This is one, if you want to use it, you can. It allows you to define uh, a status of a registrant. A lot of people will use that on like uh, conference programs to distinguish between a guest, a speaker, a panelist. Uh, and again, you, all of these items, of course, with a little plus next to them means you can define the labels for those. All right. Um, course must be completed by and the course must be completed on. Expiration date and the completed fields are probably special handling fields, uh, probably more used for like um, online class programs. So probably a dance class wouldn't be necessarily worried about. But if you had a, an online class and that it was open for X amount of days and you want to record when did the student complete this online class, you've got a couple of date fields to work with that. Again, that part of the preferences, if you have those turned off, you won't be seeing those on your screen. CEUs, hours, and credits. Again, um, ACEWARE uses a salvation by grace approach in that by registering in the class, you automatically assign the full hours credit CEUs to that registration. What you do is remove those CEUs and hours from the student's credits if they don't make the grade. And of course, you can do that by editing the registration itself. But alternatively, and this is actually my recommendation on a class, is that what you do is you look up the class, and then from the student list on the class, you can bring up a browse window. Now note up at the top left, you see the student's name and you see the note and uh, the, the, the email, but, and I'll get out of this view, you can actually go through the hours in the CEUs, 0.8 CEUs, hours is 8.0, and maybe their grade, well, satisfactory, unsatisfactory. If we were to do letter grade, they got a B. This person got only four hours, or 0.4, C, or Maybe you're going to do zero CEUs, and we're going to say only four hours attended, and his grade would be a fail. So again, you can edit the entire course list, grades, hours, CEUs, and credits, right from the roster view. When you close that roster view, if you watch in the upper right-hand corner, when I close the view of this roster, you'll see a message that says, updated two records. And so that's a, the, the most efficient way to deal with mass editing grade CEUs hours. Certificate date, again, can be used to indicate when you print a certificate. The report tool has the ability to stamp this date when you actually literally print a certificate, so it allows for tracking. Middle of the registration screen, I hope people use these, but they basically are special tools that allow you to get a quick reference to other things that are going on in a registration. And I haven't honestly tried this in a while with eight, and we're still working on some of the new release features. So let's give that a shot. Matthew, you ready? So we're going to go to a registration and say uh, pay info. The pay info should show you all of the payments tied to this one registration. So we can see that there was a billing, and then there was a check payment. You could say, well, I want to go back to the class. I want to go back to the course that's the ACEWARE conference and maybe look up some information. So we click on this, and we're able to go clear back to the course, look at the description, look at all the fees, look at the instructor detail. Uh, ditto, again, I can actually go to the name. If I said, well, I'm dealing with Charles, and he says, I moved. I'm no longer on Erickson Street. I am now on Dyer Road, or I'm no longer on Dyer, I'm on Puddle Creek Boulevard, 10386. 
S-T-U-T-C-R-B-L-V-D. Uh, you can do the save on that. And again, stay right from the registration screen. So uh, roster, again, if you're dealing with somebody on the phone and they say, has anybody else from ACEWARE registered for this class, uh, you can hit on roster, show students from this firm, and we'll say there are no other registrations on there. And so, Matthew, we've got a, we've got a glitch on that one. <clears throat> but that uh, show other students in the class allows you to, let me get back to Havlicek again, allows you to see other students in that class. And it also offers you uh, a chance to see only those people from the particular firm uh, that Mr. Havlicek might be with. Okay, so we're, we're kind of help Matthew clean up a few things. This is still the beta version of our 8.0. All right, back to the to the slideshow roster. Oh, see also. The see also is your opportunity to do cross-selling. Uh, when you're setting up courses, and I think we covered that in the course side, there is the ability to set up on a class. Now, I doubt that we have any see also records, no related courses available. But when you're on a course, in the catalog information area under prerequisites, you could put in links from this class, ACE 300, the ACEWARE conference, to any other related courses. So if you had a beginning sculpture class that you might also be doing a tour of a museum that has a large sculpture display, you could say related class tour of the Acme Gallery. And on the tour of the Acme Gallery, you'd put a related course beginning sculpture. So again, that would allow you to cross-sell, uh, try to get the students to say, would you also like to take the tour of the gallery, which also covers sculpture. So um, reg code, miscellaneous code, are fields that you can modify. Uh, you can validate both. The who paid, paid by. Uh, this is handled automatically by the system. If the payer name is the same as a student, it automatically puts a P there. If the payer name is the firm, which is the same firm as the students, it puts in an F. And if it's neither of the two, it'll put in O for other. Uh, you can edit that, but if you're trying to analyze in a business program, are most of my participants paying for these classes themselves uh, through their own money, checkbook, credit card, or are they being paid by a firm? Uh, or they're paid by third party. Maybe you're billing these out to a workforce agency or a employment training agency. Uh, this is a way for you to help track that. I'm kind of, I don't know if anybody's paying attention to that. I'm going to wake people up. I haven't done this yet. Raise your hand if you do reports based on that paid by. Anybody paying attention to that? Raise your hand if you're running reports on like how many registrations are paid by student versus paid by, uh, we got a couple. All right, all right, got, a, got two, three out there. All right, but again, if you're trying to analyze your your mix of uh, how the payments are coming in on your program, and this would be probably primarily for career center, vocational, technical, professional development type programs, I think that is a tool that would be very, ha very handy. OK, uh, main fee to be charged. Uh, this is, again, as part of the registration process. Fee order determines the order. Uh, there's an option called fee preference, which we'll talk about at the end. Uh, to find a matching fee, adding additional charges. One of the things I want to highlight again, because I don't think people remember that sometimes, is that mo most of the time when you are adding a fee adjustment description, you can pick from a standard item. It's an additional charge. It's a full refund partial. Uh, it's a bad check fee. Uh, there's some other descriptor that you want to put in. But if there's a reason for you to do a one-time entry um, of, a, of an adjustment, the Alt-F4 allows you to do that, where you can type in whatever the heck you want uh, in, the, in the adjustment. Adding a registration note, of course. Uh, being able to note the date the confirmation was sent. Again, that uh, can be handled automatically by adding a function to your receipt. 
Uh, again, that's, that's something that's done through the receipt or the report function. Uh, one, of the, one of the things, if you, to remind you or if you haven't figured this out yet, uh, there are a number of special functions in Aceware's tool set that you can add to a particular report that at the end of the report, it will actually update data in a record. So the idea that when you print a particular receipt, it would stamp a date in the confirmed field on the registration. All right, Lori, how are you doing? I've been just going a mile a minute. Uh, Matthew, anything that you want me to back up on? So far, so good. And again, we have Matthew Olson, our our chief wizard, who has made all these wonderful things online. So if you have a Matthew question for existing customers, shout it out, and Lori will get it off to him. All right. Is there anywhere on the course completion or on the course screen where you can fill in the course completion date that would will automatically fill in on the registration side? Mm, I don't think you mean like uh, the completed by field over here that we're looking at. Yes. I don't know, Matthew, whether that is on the view of the course or not. I am thinking not. Uh, student list. Hours, date, now I suppose, show me status, well, I take that back, RG complete, let's put in a date there, 01, 01, 14, Matthew may be that dang good. Let's close this, <laughs> we did it. The answer is yes. So if you go to student list, go over to the RG complete, there it is, I put in 01, 01, 14. And that uh, put it in. Matthew, can you rearrange these columns like you could in, um, will those stick? I don't remember, but I definitely can't take credit for the RG complete in there. Really? I thought I was going to give done. you the props for that. Uh, what no, I, was showing, I wish. There you go. What I was showing folks is that, uh, and I'm going to try this, I rearranged the order of the view for those of you that are using the edit roster from the course screen. If you rearrange the view, you say, well, I don't reg want registration note. I want to shove it off to the right. And I want my fee category. I want email off to the right so that I just have CCEUs, complete date. I want t-shirt off to the right. I don't care. That it used to be that when you closed and saved that and went back to it, it saved it. So you are, you are doing good, Matthew. It will remember your order. So this is actually kind of a hidden feature in that you as a user get to customize the order and actually you can like mush the columns together to get more viewable space <clears throat> as you're working with the, uh, the edit student roster mode. So, so that you didn't know you were that good, Matthew. All right, so the date the confirmation was sent. Lori, that was a good question, and we were able to give a good answer. Anything else on the question side uh, the alt that you want to deal with now? Yeah, we're going to deal with it now. The Alt F4 function, mm -hmm. the, the adjustment description, that one time people want to see that happen. Oh, ye, ye of little faith, ye of little faith. <laughs> so if we're setting here, and I'm going to get back to have a check, Avery Lisa. We're setting here on the adjustment. Now again, if you hover over it, it'll show. Toggle between validated and open. Now one normally, you can only pick from one of the options that are in here. But if you hold the Alt key down, and don't press F4, but the number four, now look at that field. That charges field is now empty, and I can put whatever I want to. And again, the dollar amount stays the same. But now when you leave this screen and go back to it, it will be back to validated. So that's a one-time thing per registration. But where you need to make some special entry, you're going to give a discount for this person because they bought donuts. And there isn't a note for that in the, in the normal setting. So we're going to say Alt 4, Alt number 4. And we're going to say brought, come back to me here, brought donuts. And we're going to give them a $5 discount. 
Uh, now, of course, I messed up my balance because I had a full class. But the point is, that allows you to make any kind of change a positive, a negative. It can be an additional charge. It can be a discount. Uh, and you can actually do the quantities on it, again, if you turn on the quantity. And I'm going to stop here. I'm not, some of you may not realize if you're an old uh, or a former, I said, take that back. If you're a long-standing student manager customer, this quantity element is relatively new, uh, which allows you to indicate how many of something that's an additional optional fee or a, uh, an add-on charge that they might want to be adding to the system. And so the way you've got to set that up is go to Preferences, Go to Preferences, Register, and it says Use Additional Fee Quantity. I believe that's the setting. You'll note that's blue, which means it's global. But when you turn that on, then you'll have the ability to be able to put in the numbers of how many multiples you might want. Good question. Um, anything else, Lori? Right now. That's about it for now. All right. Uh, I think we're doing pretty good time-wise. Um, bottom of the screen, kind of in the green uh, uh, status screen, you've got who was the creator, who added the registration, who was the one that updated it, when it was added, when it was updated. Of course, for those of you who use Ace Web, a registration from the web would be www.web uh, is the person who is, is the person is how that registration was entered. Uh, User-defined field on the registration record. Probably the biggest use here is if you do maybe more conference work, you get into date arrival, date departure. Uh, do you, are there any special food items related to their allergies, or do they want fish, chicken, or beef for the banquet? You know, this allows you to set these up. Um, now, again, uh, for those of you in the system you know that these labels uh, are global for all registrations across the entire student manager data set once you've set them up. However, uh, if you're doing ACE Web, you can actually have these generic, you know, type 1, type 2, type 3. And for every individual conference you're doing, you can actually have type 1 to be food preference for the social work conference for the football camp you might want to set you might take that same field and you'd put on that field position and even though as long as you are evaluating those within a given class you can break the rules that are normally that say you don't put apples and oranges in the same field as long as you're doing data analysis within a course at a time you can you can get by with that it's kind of a way to extend extend the system Okay, uh, user defined fields. Um, who approved this registration? We jumped on to the other one here. This is useful again, where you've got, if you've got supervisors or foremen or department heads who send people to register in your programs, uh, the who approved allows you to track the, the sending party and allows you an opportunity to maybe go back and market to not the poor Joe who gets sent to a class, but that foreman, that department head, that training director who said, OK, Joe, go over to the university and take this class. How many people, I'm going to do a show of hands again. I'm going to drop them. How many people pay attention or use any of this approve the Reggie site? How are we doing? Anybody doing that? Oh, goodness, nobody. Uh, again. It's it's in there uh, for your use if you if you'd like to see that, or if you'd like to enable that in your system. Uh, it's actually enabled. It just it's just using it. I'm going to go in and show that since nobody seems to be doing that. So under here, who approved this registration? What you do is if I know that Jeff Brown was sent by uh, Bob Dole, uh, I'm going to look up Dole. O L E. There's Bob. And then it'll say approved by Bob Dole. And there are reports in the system that you can actually generate then that would say, show me all of the registrations that Bob Dole uh, approved or that, were, that came in through his um, side 
<clears throat> and be able to then send a note, Bob, thank you for sending 30 people to our classes. I uh, would like to invite you to lunch, uh, take you to dinner, invite you to meet the president. You, it allows you an opportunity to go back and uh, try to get uh, some extra business with that particular group. All right, Lori, questions? Anything? We doing good? I think we're doing very well. All right. Fees and payments, getting the ducks in order. I love ducks. I love ducks. Okay. First thing first is assigning the proper fee on the registration screen. I want to kind of, before we leave this kind of plain screen, there are two elements of the registration. First of all is your, uh, basically the charges. And your charges are going to represent the um, registration fee. You pick the registration fee level on this particular class. You would indicate the number of seats in the class. You would add any additional charges. You'd make any additional fee adjustments. And of course, when you make a fee adjustment, it'll float up into the additional charge area, and it'll keep adding. There's literally no limit. Uh, so anyway, that part, the top part, is the fee uh, charges. Then the total paid represents, of course, what they paid. How much they owe is the top one total due, how much they paid, and then, of course, the balance. And the point is you generally don't leave the registration screen until the charges are the way you want, and you don't leave the registration until they're paid or you bill them uh, for the amount. So that's basically the idea of the fee side. Uh, there's the Alt-4. Alt we've, we've covered that already. Uh, after you've got the fees all set, then, of course, you go to the Payments button. Takes you to the blank payment screen. One of the things to note is that we've tried to give you, tried to give you some visuals here. Adding a payment so that when you're in an Add mode, it shows Adding Payment. And, of course, where you haven't picked a payment type by default, it says void, which means you've got to you've got to tell the system. And this is again, this is all from the back office work. Obviously, we're not talking about registrations coming in from Ace Web, the online payment component, which is handled through Ace Web. This is your staff access, the admin access to the registration screen. Indicate the payment type. Uh, fill in the payment, select the payment method, put in the details of the payment. Um, one of the things, and we'll get back to that, that before we leave the, the payment screen, there are several elements on the payment screen that uh, we're going to, I think we have time to cover, but that number one is paid by firm, paid by individual. Um, the default is that if you're making a payment, and the person is connected to a firm, by default, it'll put in the firm name there. If you've got a person who originally got into your system because their boss sent them to a class, and now they're going to take a cooking class or personal interest class, when you go in to register them and go to pay, it may show the firm name here, in which case this little button that will say pay by individual hit that, and it'll flip from Aceware Systems to Chuck Havlicek. The other thing you can do is actually find a third party. You can locate a third party firm to, pay, to indicate as who's a payer. You can find a name in the database if there's, again, my buddy Clint is picking up the tabs. Or if you're doing multiple payments for, if you're doing multiple registrations and the same payer is paying for all of these registrations, the clone pay detail remembers or keeps on a clipboard, if you would, the last payment detail that you saved in either editing or adding payments. So again, wanted to make sure people realize that these elements here really give you tremendous amount of flexibility in, in recording payment information. And then, of course, finally, you can actually put in the payer name a completely different person, address, agency uh, to whom that payment is recorded, whether it's a billing or whether it's actually collecting money. And then finally, under additional notes, uh, there is some supplemental data. Uh, there's a note field, and I'll get back to live in a second, Matthew, 
when we do an example, uh, and I think a couple of brand new fields that you might like. Is Gloria on the phone here? I was going to say we'll see if she's see if she's watching. Is that on there, Matthew? Is it? Is it? Should be. Um, all right. So uh, when you're done getting the payment, the payer name in, you've got the detail of the check. Clicking print receipt and close will take you to the receipt uh, printing. Now, note on multiple payments, make sure that you click the add button, otherwise changing an existing payment. And again, that's the behavior of Aceware is that when you land on an existing record, you're in edit mode automatically. If you want to add a new record, you always have to hit the add button. All right, um, I'm going to go back now to live, and let's go ahead and make a registration and, and do a payment kind of from the get-go. So let's say we're looking up a name, and I'm going to find, um, I don't know, Lori, I think I've got you in here, Thompson. Lori Thompson. So here you are. I'm going to see what course you've taken. Try to stay away from ones that you might already be in. Add a registration into Mastering Student Manager 8.0, and of course we've got the date. Okay, so we're at a member fee. Uh, we've got you in the class. We have a tracking fee. The tracking fee comes from the name. So at this point, uh, let's say our fees are fine. We're good. We go to payments. So I'm going to say this is a check. Now, again, right now the payer name is Lori Thompson. If I wanted to put paid by firm, I click that and we go to Aceware Systems. I guess it's when we do a billing that it defaults to the, to the firm name. So you can flip between individual and firm, um, or we could find a completely different firm by going to the firm lookup. We could click clone pay detail. Uh, and when you, if you see the hover that's popping up, Lori, is my screen refreshing uh, in good time? I never ask you. Should be showing the hover. Yeah, yeah. All right. Um, but this one, I have no existing payment record because I haven't made any payment data so far today. If there would have been, it would say current information would be Lori Thompson, Aceware Systems, whatever. This is the new part, additional notes, payment notes, transaction ID for Aceweb, these are three new data fields. So again, I don't know if Gloria is on here from Lewis and Clark. These are, whoops, from right here on. Uh, these three data fields allow you to define custom data elements that you might want to track related to a payment. And what that will give you is if you're using a third-party system or trying to connect to, integrate it with Banner or Datatel or PeopleSoft, you can actually track uh, session ID information or notes from your financials on the system level in that. All right, so we've got the payment in. We're ready to print the receipt and close. And by Generate. the way, Gloria is jumping up and down. And oh, yeah. And See, and look, Gloria, uh, Gloria has been patient but persistent, and it's proof that the squeaking wheel or being patient and eventually us folks at Ace where we figured out and we said, you know, that's a pretty good idea. Let's do that. So, Gloria, there you go. So you got to wait a couple weeks, but uh, it will be ready pretty darn quick. Um, and there's your receipt. All right. Just before we leave the receipt, I wanted to reference for you that, um, well, first of all, number one, uh, remember that the interest codes, whenever you add a registration, that whatever subject code is on the course, that subject code will automatically drop into the interest codes on the person record so that it will add an interest code to that student based on your subject code in the course. So again, that's part of the integrated nature of managers tracking data. Um, the other thing here is that, and I had the thought, and now it went away, Lori, with registration. Oh, receipts. So I'm going to go back to edit registration, and we're back at the class that we just registered Lori in. On the print receipt side, generally you probably have a number of alternate style receipts that you can use. Obviously, if you have the email module, you can be doing email receipts. 
sometimes you're doing a conventional receipt, but you want to do something special. Well, two or three different ones. A confirmation letter. Maybe you prefer a more um, you know, personal nature. Thank you for choosing, yada, yada, yada. Here is your information. You say, all right, that's good. Well, maybe you want, you're doing uh, walk-ins at a conference, and you've got a registration, and you need to get them a name badge right away. Well, one of the options is receipt with big badge that allows you to generate a receipt and actually print out a name badge at the same time. So you print them a receipt, hand them the receipt, they cut their name badge off and put it in the tag and they're out of there. You don't have to wait for receipts to be printed in a queue later at the end of the day. So again, that multiple receipt options in there. Lori, questions, how are we doing? Uh, I, I think we're close on time. Uh, I, mean, I, mean, I think we're OK on time. Yes, we're, we're I, fine I've been, on time. Yeah, we're good. And, and what I have now, I'm going to hold till the end. Hold off. OK, billing records on a registration. Um, I'm going to, again, for existing customers, uh, for, if you're watching this uh, you know, later, Raise your hand if you use registrations, uh, use the billing record option on registration. All right, raise your hand. I'm not seeing any. I'm not, oh, we got Chris. Good enough. Chris, by the way, I'm still waiting for that uh, email. Uh, Mel, all right, we've got a few. And again, the, the big deal about the billing record option for a uh, registration record is that it allows you to get put in a Trojan horse person connected to a class so that you can assign fees to that student, uh, but they are not considered part of the class as far as enrollment count. And if you're doing statistics, you're doing your reports to the regents about how many registrations you've got, it allows you to indicate a person in the database, run all the reports and all, but the point is he is marked, or she is marked as somebody who's getting the bill for this class, but has not registered for that class. So it's kind of, I don't know, a third gender or a, a ghost uh, registration. Trojan horse is probably the best terminology on it. And again, this is particularly useful if you do contract programs or in-house training programs where you might charge $4,000 for the class plus expenses. and there's only one bill for that, and everybody else, you just put the names into the system at zero cost so that you don't have to try to divide up however many people show up by a flat fee. So again, if you're doing contract programs with kind of fixed price approach, really check out the billing record piece if you're not already using that. Uh, payments. <clears throat> if you are doing a billing to a student in a class, you have the option to do installments. And again, I'm going to I'm going to raise hands. I'm just kind of curious. Raise your hand if you do billings and you offer people installment payments. If you would, anybody doing the billing plan? Chris, bless you. Way to go, girl. Well, we got a few. All right. Let me kind of show you that because I think this is one. And again, I guess I should clarify, it probably is more valid for high dollar programs. But if you're doing a several hundred dollar or a, or a five digit, four digit, five digit program, uh, a big tour that might be several hundred dollars or a couple thousands of dollars, you can actually create a registration. Let's find a class. I don't know that I've got a big, big one here, Lori. I want to find a class. Financial management in the millennia. Nope. <clears throat> and we've got to get it. OK, so we've got. Financial management, let me get back in here and reset things. The beta nature, beta nature, what we're doing. I'm going to hit F6 a couple of times. Look up Smith. Add a registration for, and we'll just put extend student manager with ACE. OK, it doesn't make any difference how many. We're going to, we have a registration. We could have whatever amount due. When you go to payments and you go to billing, if you have a, a case where you say, well, it would be useful for the student to be able to pay this amount in multiple installments, if you go to payment plan, it says how many installments you want to create. And you can put 2 or 20. And what it'll do is divide up the amount of the bill. 
into X number of equal amounts, and it'll, it'll handle the missing penny, 67, 67, 66, and it'll put it out 30 days, 30 days, 30 days. Now, you can edit this. You say, well, I just want that to be the end of the month, so we're going to say the 30th, and we're going to say, is it 31 or 30? I forget. 30 days, that's September, April. 31 for July, and OK, close. <clears throat> and that will then generate th uh, three multiple payments for this particular student here. Uh, so that we'll have multiple payments for this student that then will be billed out in three different dates. Uh, Matthew, that may need a little bit of work, the, the billing plan. So <clears throat> again, uh, we're still dealing with the beta element. So that's why we got Matthew in here. All right, so that is the billing option. Again, for large dollar, high dollar programs where a student is making those payments themselves, it does offer you some options to let them get you know, monthly payments uh, on the program. All right, the installment plan. Payment notes. Again, lots of options for you. Accept multiple payments. Uh, so if someone wants to pay part of the money by check, part of the money by credit card, and they haul out a wad of cash for the balance, you can do that. Uh, each different payment will get its own receipt number, so you can track it through the audit trail. You can pay part of a registration. Uh, and you could pay part of what's due uh, by credit card and or payment or check and bill the rest. And again, bill to the student, bill to a third party, bill to an agency. And of course, you can add notes to a registration. Trying to think any other things on general payment notes. We've covered most of those here. Lori? Um, looking back through my questions, I don't see anything. I think you guys. All right. I think we've covered that. Changes to a registration. Again, in a perfect world, the student finds the class, they register for the class, they pay for the class, and that's good. Uh, it doesn't work that way. So <clears throat> you've got students that register and two minutes later call and say, oh, I forgot about yada, yada. I need to cancel. I need to transfer. Well, you've got options. Number one, you can cancel the registration and refund all or a portion of the money based on your refund policy. Number two, you can cancel a registration and keep all of the money. Typically, that would be if somebody does not let you know they're not going to come and you know, they, they, they don't show up at class, uh, and afterwards they say a cancellation, and you say, no, nah, sorry, buddy, unless you let us know before the class, you know, uh, that's on you. You can cancel the registration, and rather than refunding to the student, you can refund the student's money to escrow. And again, escrow is a great tool that allows you to, to track money for students without having to go through the refund process. And then finally, you can transfer a registration to a different class or a different person. So I'm going to run through those. <clears throat> Canceling a register, well, here's another example here with no payments involved. Somebody's registering, and then they said right away, you haven't made a payment yet, but they said, i got to cancel. Well, what you do, all you have to do is manually click the cancel button, put in a note in the fee adjustment description what you did, and you negativize, you negativize, sorry about that. You put in a negative entry to back off the fee so the total due is zero, and at that point, you're done. You've, you've got it marked as a, they were at one point registered but then canceled uh, so that the goal is obviously on a council registration. If they don't owe you and you don't owe them, there should be a zero balance on that. Uh, refund wizard. Uh, if you're doing refunds, and again, um, let me show you where that's at in the system because in, um, in doing registration, let's find a registration for Miss Lori here that has and uh, we'll go to Hamlet Check. I think I've got some registrations. Edit a registration. So that if I've got a registration and I need to make a refund to the student or the person says, I've got to cancel, it's ahead of the class. Uh, and so you go to payments. There is a tool called Refund Wizard. 
And when you click on that is where you get the set of tools that we were showing here. You have options. Refund to the student, which would show as a negative payment going back to the student. Refund to escrow. Uh, and then you could choose how much you're refunding. Total current payment. So if they were multiple payments, maybe um, they paid part by check and part by a credit card, and they want to refund the credit card payment and keep the check, or vice versa, you can do that. Total paid minus the fixed amount, a fixed amount of percentage of the total. So it'll do the math for you uh, in terms of how much you're doing refunds. Uh, the wizard will also automatically cancel the registration, zero out hours credits. The one thing you do need to do is to indicate why is why is this registration being canceled? Uh, or if it's full refund, partial, or you had to cancel the class. So that you put in a note in here as to why this is being canceled. And again, the descriptors for this come out of the codes area. And again, there is optional fees, main fees, and then registration fee adjustment uh, descriptors <clears throat> that we're looking at right here. All right, I want to kind of show you where that came from, uh, the reason why. The other thing you can do under the registration payment or under the payment screen is transfer payments. If you've got a case where somebody writes you a check and after they wrote the check, they figured out they wrote it for more than what was due on this class, you can actually transfer part of that receipt that you've recorded here to either escrow uh, or to a different registration. So again, there are options to be able to adjust money uh, if a payment has been made uh, on a particular class after the payment's recorded and you've got the receipt. All right, uh, escrow. Uh, again, I'm going to ask for a show of hands again. How many of you? run escrow accounts or do escrow accounts uh, rather than allow a student to put money in escrow rather than doing a full refund every time all the time when they say I have to cancel a class. All right, Rita, we got a couple there. Anybody else? Lisa, all right, all right. Yeah, the escrow, again, if the big issue here is that you make sure this is okay with your business manager, your business office, but what it allows you to do is to give students credits. Think of it as a savings account for the student or a rainy day fund. I don't think it's, it's to your benefit. <clears throat> if you can avoid writing a check to a student for a class that they couldn't go to, and they've met the rules for how you, you do a refund, then especially if that student is one that says, well, I can't make this class, but I know I want to take another class. I'm just not sure what schedule will work. Uh, and you say, well, I can hold that money, that refund of yours in escrow and let you apply it to a future class. So again, the escrow has a lot of options there. The other thing about the escrow is that it, you might even have a different policy. If you say if, the, if you want a refund on a class that you are canceling and it's within two weeks, you pay a $20 penalty. But if you were to let us hold the money in escrow for you, we'll let you credit the full amount of your payment toward a future class. So your point is you get an opportunity to keep that money in circulation without giving it back to the student and depending on them to take the initiative to come back and take a class. So I always like the idea that I'd like to play the banker on that. And especially if and we're not trying to mess up the student or to mess with the student, but if that's a student who is legitimately saying, yeah, I'd like to take another class, you say, let me help you out. I'll hold that money in escrow, and you just let me know when you want to use it. We'll apply it to your class. Lori, questions. I, I want to make sure that people are OK with the escrow. Anything going on with that? No questions about escrow. OK, canceling a registration with an active billing. <clears throat> Again, when we have billings out there, uh, and incidentally, we do have a webinar on billing and invoicing. We're just not going to have time to cover it, obviously, in the five minutes left. Uh, this is a busy topic. Uh, but we talk about that. 
when you cancel a registration that has an open billing, one of the things you'll want to do is generally void the billing records. Because otherwise, even though the registration may be canceled, unless you void the billings, uh, manager's accounts receivable will say, that's an active bill. Until you tell me to back off, I'm going to try to collect that for you. So that's, that's a good thing, but you just need to d deal with the billings if you want to fully cancel. Grouping registrations. Again, we're, 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 we're getting to the tail end here, but lots of ground to cover. A couple of different places. One, a person is registering in several courses and want to make one payment. And again, it could be, doesn't have to be with credit card. They could be making a payment by check. But the point is, one individual is doing, think of it as shopping cart. You're doing shopping carts inside a manager, the back office part. <clears throat> you can do several employees from one company have registered, and the company wants to group all them and pay for them together in one check. Uh, and then two or more children from the same family register for a camp, and the parent wants to make a single payment for both the kids. So the idea of multiple courses, multiple people, one payer, where you're going to be paying for it at the time, credit card or check, is generally when you want to be dealing with grouping. Again, if you're using company invoicing, that is an optional module for some of you that have uh, been around and might not have that module. But if you've got company invoicing and it's billing, um, I would recommend not doing uh, grouping. It's a lot simpler. Just say bill to Aceware, bill to Aceware, bill to Aceware. The company invoicing system will take care of grouping those together for you. OK, uh, doing grouping, clicking on the group button. Once you add a registration, and again, on a group inside the student manager, you would typically always you'd add a registration. You would not make the payment. Uh, so you would add one registration, don't make a payment, go to the second registration, and get the fees, and then click the group button. And then when you do that, it will take you to the group lookup. Now, <clears throat> for those of you familiar with the old Aceware group lookup, the model was that it would show you the most recent registration that was done by group number, the ID number, the course code. It showed you the name and last name and title, but you couldn't search by it. The new grouping lookup of Matthews, this wonderful magical lookup, now lets you search on name, or the course title. So you can find Joe Schmo way down in the database to group them with the registration that you're in right now. So I think that is going to be wonderful for you folks that are doing grouping. Whoops, come back. Speed registration, special tool now. We're, we're just about done, and we'll try to get to this to get, you get your questions. Doing speed registration entry is done from module registrations. What you'll do is you'll select a class, and it'll take you to the setup screen. Uh, what is the base registration fee? You would set the status, the tracking code, the reg code. You have an option to create a group on the fly, <clears throat> assign the hours, CEUs, a default grade. And then you can either add names, which will let you select names from the name table, or use the import wizard. And what the import wizard allows you to do is add names from an Excel spreadsheet. And this is wonderful for backloading registration from contract training or course programs. And again, I want to know what's out there. Tell me if you're, this has actually been in 7.2 for a while now. Anybody using the import wizard to add mass add registrations into a class? I'm looking, I'm looking, Lori, I don't see. There's a couple. All right. All right, very good. Got a couple folks in there. Again, if you're getting a, an Excel file of students from a contract training course from a company or from the instructor, it said, here are the names of the people who were on, a, on an Excel spreadsheet that were at the XYZ in-house class. <clears throat> you can use the import wizard to bring those names in. So again, great tool. Um, again, I would recommend if you have not done this before, go to the website. And I'm going to get, let me get back to the website. Go to Aceware's website. Um, go to 
demo, student manager demo, get the student manager demo. You'll note that we've now got under the student manager demo side the note that <clears throat> we've got uh, the beta version of student manager APONO is up on the demo side, so you can actually go in and practice with, uh, practice with the new uh, import wizard. It is a great tool, great, great tool. Um, all right, let's see here. The um, proxy registration. Um, this is primarily a, re a relevance to, again, those who are using ACE Web for web registration. And the idea that if, if you're on the website, you're a student, you're a parent, you're a, um, you're a department head at an agency or training director, and you're doing the enroll somebody else in a class, then the proxy will show who was the student who, or who was the person who registered XYZ in the class. What the proxy button allows you from the back office, from the student manager side, is to actually manually assign a handler to a registration. But the whole point of that is that the person who has either registered them on the web or the person who was assigned the proxy by a staff member could now go on ACEWeb and look at uh, their history of registrations that they've entered and be able to see who it was that I've entered into classes. <clears throat> and I'm not going to have time to look at that, but that is, uh, again, I believe on the ACEWeb demo. Uh, we've got examples of how that works. And obviously, check with your tech if you've got questions. Multiple seats. Uh, one of the options on student manager's registration side is that you can actually have one person buy multiple seats in a class. Again, if you've got a company that it's a, it's a uh, limited enrollment class, they want to put three seats in this computer class, uh, but they don't know who the other two people are going to be uh, because they're hiring people right and left. So they can actually pre-buy multiple seats, hold them, and then you can assign those seats to the individuals once they've uh, called in their names. Ditto with optional fees. So uh, lunches or extra books or extra tickets to a concert, <clears throat> you can buy multiples of those. And we talked about preferences where that's turned on. The publish option. Uh, this is, again, a, a feature you can turn on and off from student manager. But basically, this allows you to control whether or not a student's name is published on the list of those registered online. And again, if you're doing annual meetings, if you're doing fraternal groups where they're almost like reunions and Fred wants to know if his buddy Sam is going to come to the 2014 reunion conference event, uh, you can actually show on the web, uh, show, out, show me who is coming to the program. That, that's an option for you. Helpful tips. Uh, using the grade field, if you need a letter grade and a numeric field, use either grade for either letter or numeric, and then you can use one of the miscellaneous fields for the other. Uh, receipt number. Uh, if you've receded, if you receded a payment and there's an error, what you can what you can do, what you can do is rather than delete it, you know, and delete it, you would change a payment type to void, which keeps a record of that receipt in the system uh, for auditing purposes. So again, that's generally best practice. Uh, multiple fees, senior fees. One of the options is that you can have a fee preference on the name screen to set special person level fees, things like alumni, senior citizen, resident, non-resident, and real quickly, we'll pull up Mr. McCain here and go to Mr. McCain, CCIA. So the idea is that in the fee category field, which is one of the preferences, you can actually assign a particular category. They're a silver citizen. They're a staff fee. They are a student. Uh, they could be a resident or typically non-resident if you charge them uh, more or less. And that then when you go to register them in a class, um, they would automatically get whatever fee, if you have defined a fee in the fee set, 
they'll get a particular fee set. Uh, upsell, the catalog builder, allows you to indicate cross courses. I think I mentioned that when we were looking at the registration. And whew, we are two minutes over our 60, but we have a lot of ground to cover. Okay, Lori, I'm ready. We'll throw the questions. Let's go. Deep breath, Chuck, because we don't oh. have any questions, but you know, I, I want you to make it through, and I feel like you need There we go. Oh, we're doing good. I'm, I'm pumped. I'm on a roll. Okay. With the upgrade, will we lose customized queries and reports? Uh, no. No, you, you will not. And, and again, reports come over, uh, queries come over. No problem there. Okay. Uh, if you want the person marked as a billing record to actually attend the class, you just don't use the billing correct, record, correct? Correct. If, you, if the person who is getting the bill, now again, and back to the idea of the billing record, uh, if I wanted to add a registration into a class, if this person is going to be picking up the entire tab, and that might be a contract course of $4,000, but he's actually going to be in the class, you're fine. Just don't mark it as a billing record. His name will appear in the class, and what you'd have is his fee is $5,000, and he'd just show uh, his fee in the list of, um, of the registrants. Yes, absolutely. That's, 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 that's exactly how you, how you do it. Okay. Chris says they'd like to be able to edit the refund to refund the student and not the payer. For example, when I, 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 Chris, that's one of those notes you need to send me in an email so we can get it on the list for Matthew here. But yeah, the idea of refunding the student, by default, of course, the, the goal is typically you're going to refund to the, to the payer since that's who made the payment. But in the case of career programs where you're doing scholarship payouts, uh, I see that's the case. And Matthew, um, I'll try to remind you to put that on the, the wish list to take a look at. So, yeah, thank you, Chris. I think that's one of those things that's already done, though. Oh, oh, well, I, I, let, me, uh, let, me, let me ungroup this. Uh, oh, we'll check. Remove this record from the group. Payments, uh, refund wizard. Now, so if I you say refund to payer, current payment amount refunded, process. Yeah, we're running into an error on that. That did not appear to give us a choice. Typically, and this is where Chris is going at, the, the refund is assigned to the payer. Um, so Matthew, okay. we need to take a double check on that. It's probably right, on the wish list for me to do. Oh, okay, to do. But, That's where yeah. you might have seen that. So. Uh, it should right. be coming. All right. So uh, Chris, keep, 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 keep reminding us. See, it worked for Gloria there. There you go. <laughs> Can we group registrations and then create a payment plan? Uh, that would not be, it would be, I'm not sure you can do that. I think a payment plan is for one payment or one billing for one person. I don't know, I, in other words, if you had five or six registrations together and did a billing plan on that, I am not sure. Matthew, do you know? I've not tested that behavior. I yeah, I have no idea. I don't think you can. I don't I think, think we'd support person. that. I think it it wouldn't know kind of what to do because you've got multiple. Yeah, I'm not quite sure. I don't think that. I don't think we can do that. Okay, and we have one person who during the webinar downloaded the demo and would like the login and password. The demo. Look at the uh, again. Looking at your login screen, if you'll note, it says username Ace. Password ACE. It's ACE and tab and ACE. There you go. And that is the official end of the questions. Oh, whew. well, I'm trying to think. I, I didn't have a chance to go through, um, you know, so there's some stuff on the web. The one thing I want to make sure we shout out, online help. Again, <clears throat> the online help is still 7.2 help, so the lookup mode is still the old find lookup. But the general behavior of doing registrations is really pretty much the same. So get to the online help, and you can go in and look at more detail about registrations. Again, go in and search for escrow if you'd like to learn more about the Excel system. So, um, All right, well, um, we're running a couple minutes over, covered a lot of ground. As always, we are online. We welcome you to 
find us on Facebook, uh, sign up for our email newsletters that we've got, and uh, we're going to be sending out, I think, Lori, the next webinar is on the 19th of June. And we and have that a special is, guest speaker. Okay. Who will be a uh, guest speaker on contract, on contract training, selling contract training programs. 19th of June, I think, at the 1 o'clock. So uh, mark your calendars for that. We'll be getting an announcement out that later. We're going to give Lori a week break. She's been doing... Uh, again, stacked up webinars the last few days. So again, as you leave the webinar, we welcome your comments and feedback. We're always looking for ways to improve this. And again, if you've got topics you say, boy, I could use more help on X, Y, or Z, shoot us a note, and we'll see if we can build it out in uh, one of the upcoming webinars. Matthew, thanks for setting in. I love what we've got going in 8.0. Uh, again, June 15th is the official release on it. So we we'll look forward to staying in touch and getting you on this wonderful new tool. Have a good day, everybody. Bye-bye.